Okay, I was asked to do a, um, a video on gun retention. So we're going to talk a little bit about gun retention. Um, th there's a law enforcement side, there's a civilian side, there's also the plain clothes, because law enforcement carry when they're off duty in their plain clothes. So when, when you're in uniform and you're, you've got your gun, you've got, you identified yourself as a police officer, you have your gun belt, there's different levels of, of holsters that people buy. They're called security holsters, high level, medium, low. They have different names for them. Some have one locking system. This is just like a pressure holster system. It just holds it by pressure, so it comes out without me doing anything. There's no release, there's no lock. Anybody can grab this gun and pull it out, okay? I like this holster because when I want my gun out, I want it out. So I, I, this is the holster that I carried when I worked. I, I had some higher high risk holsters. If I was carrying a long gun, then I, I wouldn't mind having a high risk holster because that's going to be my fallback weapon. I've got a long rifle, more offensive if we're doing entries or whatever. But if I'm on the road and I'm handling people, I'm usually well aware of where I'm at. I'm keeping people at a distance. I always know where my gun's at with my elbow. I'm always checking it. Um, I'll lean on it, I'll know it's there. If I get in the crowd, I, I kind of pin it with my elbow. You tell I pin this elbow right here. I can pin this gun in so I know where it's at. I can feel if anybody's reaching for it. So part of, part of gun retention is gun awareness, knowing where your gun's at, feeling it, being able to feel if somebody's getting close. Now, um, I have two different types of guns here. I, I just got a, another gun stuffed in my pocket here because I'm going to show you on a couple of ways to disengage or to, to prevent somebody from shooting you with your gun possibly. But for gun retention in the holster, your gun is safest if it's in the holster. So if somebody tries to grab your gun in a holster, it's not a good idea to try and draw it with them and then get in a fight with them over the gun. Uh, you usually have more leverage if you've got the handle instead of the barrel. However, if, if they get the handle, then you may only, just hit my, I don't know if I hit that or if I didn't put it in good when I, I, I loaded it. I pulled this out of the car, so I had to pop the, the rounds out real quick. So uh, I'm not sure if I seated that properly. That's why I fell out. Um, so if I have this part of the gun, I, I'm not as, as, as strength or, or I don't have the advantage. Kind of like a PR-24 we talk about the gun. You can have a PR-24 where you have that handle there. It gives you more strength. Or you can have a straight baton where you hold on to it like this. It's easier to take away a straight baton than a PR-24. It's easier to take away the gun if you're holding the barrel and the person has a grip. So obviously you want to have the grip. So when it's in your holster, and when you are in a situation where you think you might need it or you're getting crowded or you get in a fight or something happens, you've got to either be able to pin that with your elbow and keep that holster in to where you can keep arms off, make them reach around your elbow and defend it with your elbow. Or you stick your hand on it and you're pushing down and they're trying to pull up. You have more leverage pushing down and keeping it in the holster than they do pulling it out. Now if you grab your gun and they grab your arm, then, then they got the gun. But then you can actually get off a couple rounds, shoot, elbow, palm strike, turn around, do what you need to do. So is there one perfect way you're going to talk to different people on gun retention? There's going to be a hundred different ways on you should never do this, you should always do this. I, I kind of like to stay in Ruleville a little bit. Nothing's perfect. There's no absolutes or one way. Over time, they've kind of found that these things work best with gun retention. Either keep it in a holster, you get a grip on your gun and maintain a grip, so if it comes out, you've got the advantage. And then if you get in a fight with a gun, you want to do what's called distracting blows. And a distracting blow is a palm heel strike to the face, nose, to the hands, beat the gun, bang on their hands. Whatever you need to do, you want to distract the whole time you're going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, because you're loosening that grip. If somebody's holding your gun and you just pull, they can pull with you and they get in rhythm with you. But if you're going back and forth, it's a lot harder to hang on and you're going to loosen that grip and be able to rip that out. You also have the advantage of the front sight which is a good ripping tool. So if somebody grabs your gun like this and you have it and they have the gun, you find yourself in a gun, the best thing to do, what they found, is push forward because they have, kind of like what horses, opposition reflex a little bit. When you push forward, they're gonna compensate and push back. 
So when they're pushing back, that's the time I want to rip back. So I'm going to push forward, they're going to lean in, I'm going to rip back. And when I rip, that front sight should hopefully tear their hand. Another advantage to pulling back is I'm going to use this other hand as a leverage. So I'm pulling back with this hand and I'm pushing forward with this hand. So if the hand's here, I'm pushing and I'm pulling. So I've got two movements going here. So I've got pulling, pushing, my body's going forward and backwards. I'm disengaging, I'm pounding, I'm giving distraction, and I'm trying to re remain or regain control of my gun. And obviously, if you guys had your gun, he's pulling on it, and you can get a round off, you can fire a round off. And, then I, and I'm, I'm gonna go into how to prevent that in a second here. But, so for gun retention, a lot of things is sweeping, banging. Somebody comes from behind, and you can get your hand on it, great. You're gonna use this elbow and come around, you're gonna spin the gun away. If you drop this hip, if somebody grabs your gun, you, their hand's on top, you put your hand on top of theirs and pin that gun in there. And you keep that gun in the holster because you've got your hips and leverage to where you can spin, drop, lift up, elbow, palm strike, give all kind of distracting with whichever hand's free while one hand is either on top of their hand or is on top of your gun, keeping your gun until you can get far enough away to get out and come on target. So there, there's different ways to, to keep your gun in and distract. A lot of it, again, is distraction. I got to be aware of my strikes, my bone strikes to the nose, to the throat, palm, palm heel. Uh, they get that good palm heel, bottom fist strike. Those are the strikes I talk about in self-defense. Those all come in play. If somebody's coming in on me and I can bottom fist strike their jaw numerous times, if I can palm heel strike their jaw numerous times, I can usually distract them enough to where they're going to have other things to think about besides my gun. And that's what I want to do. Eye gouge, nose, elbow, forearm, elbow, 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 knee, knee, head to knee, head to knee, head to knee, palm heel, palm heel. Whatever you need to do, you want to get those people not thinking, who's ever going for your gun? I gotta defend myself from this guy. I can't concentrate on just getting the gun. So what happens if, if you're out at a straight angle and somebody grabs your gun? Pretty much the same thing. If somebody grabs my gun here, obviously I want distance. I wanna try and block, I wanna pull away, I'm pushing forward, I'm moving backwards, I'm getting distance. I can move to the side and push them if they're coming at an angle. And I've got this guy and this guy comes from my gun. I can pull back and push them away in front so I keep two guys in front of me. Different things, but the main thing is I'm keeping my hand here, I'm ready to fire, and I'm ready to move and defend this gun with the other hand, elbow, knee, whatever I need to do, bottom of the gun, maybe even sham it forward. If some dude grabs your gun and you're fighting and you're close, maybe shoving it forward when they're trying to grab it and push them backwards, it'll throw them off balance and they'll fall. Now these techniques work better when you have somebody grabbing a gun and holding it. And if you want to learn good defensive gun, have somebody, have one of your buddies come out there and say, yo man, try to take my gun and let's fight over it. You can use a rubber gun, you can use an unloaded clear gun, whatever, but have them try different things to try and get your gun. Uh, I got distracted a little bit on, on the different types of holster. This is called a pressure holster. Then you have a, the, uh, another level usually has one pressure switch. Then you have like a third level to where you have to push your pressure and you have to lean the gun forward or backwards before you draw. And that's to prevent somebody from just coming by and grabbing your gun. A lot of your uniform guys will wear the higher security because they're in uniform and I, I don't know, it just seems like they, they, they want to wear the higher security because they think they're involved or they see more. Uh, if you've got a plain clothes guy that's going out there working on a task force, drugs, dope, auto theft, whatever the crime may be, gangs, they're gonna contact the same amount of people but they usually have the advantage. You're not gonna go out too much on your own or get caught by yourself in those situations. Uniform, you got your radio, but sometimes you get thin on the road, you're out there in uniform, they may send one uniform or just two uniforms, only two of you, so, you know, the situation could be a little bit different. You, you don't really know what you're going into. As plain clothes, a lot of times we know kind of who we're dealing with, what we're going into, so we can plan a little bit, have more backup, uh, whatever we need, but, Again, it's personal preference. I'm not trying to crack on somebody that has a high security or saying that, you know, they don't. I, I prefer this. I want to be able to get my gun out easy. I'm less concerned about somebody getting my gun than I am about me not being able to get it out in a hurry if I need it. So, um, gun retention. 
if you're out of the holster, it's hanging on. Again, if I can keep my gun in close, it gives me a little bit, I don't have to reach as far and the person has to come closer into my space. I want a raking. I can hit him with the bottom of my fist. I can pound on it. I can palm heal him. I can hit his face, then his hands. I can knee his hands. I can fill his hands into my knees and bang it on my knee if he's got it underneath. Should I hit the damn mag release again? <laughs> so, and, and that may happen if you're fighting for your gun, you may lose a mag. And that's okay because you always know you got one in the chamber. So if a bad guy wants to come up and hit a mag release and drop your mag, you should know I still have one in the chamber and most guns will fire. I think Smith has a, a stupid safety that it won't fire without a mag in it, which I don't like. Now some people are like, oh, that's a safety hazard. So if somebody takes your gun, you can drop the mag and then they can't shoot you. Well, okay, maybe. I'd rather be able to shoot. I mean, I don't plan on losing my gun and making a bunch of safeties when I lose my gun. I plan on keeping my gun and being able to get a shot off. I mean, that, that's, to me, that's a survival mentality versus a liberal victim protectionist society kind of, we got a plan for everything, no matter what, on the bad side, instead of, you know what, I'm self-sufficient. I'm not planning on losing my gun. I want my gun to work with or without a mag. I don't, I don't like a safety. I like Glocks because they don't have safeties. I carry a 1911. 1911 has a safety, but I, I prefer a gun with no safety. Revolver's been carried for years, and they don't have safeties. And um, if you lose your mag and you have extra mags, well, then you can just throw another mag in there. Revolver, same thing. I, I'm ripping, I'm grabbing, etc. So real quick, I'm going to go over how to prevent somebody if they have a gun on you and you have no other option but either to grab the gun or say, you know what, i got to fight for the gun. A revolver, a lot of inexperienced people, I know I unloaded this, but I'll check it. A revolver with a hammer that's cocked cannot fire if your finger is here. So if I pull this trigger right now, the hammer can't fall. So if I'm trying to take a gun, and again, this comes to awareness, I'm looking at the gun that I'm taking. If I'm trying to take a gun and I see that it's cocked like this, I want to grab it in this area and try to get one of my fingers in between here. I don't care which one. But if I grab it fast, I know I can get one of these fingers in here. And if as long as I get one finger in between that firing pin, I know this gun can't fire. My hand ain't coming off here. He can bang and do all he wants. And then I'm just going to reverse that. I'm going to start doing the palm heel strikes, the banging, the kneeing, the pulling, the yanking, the twisting, the, the back and forth. Um, when you're trying to fight for a baton, there's a thing called the circle. The circle, I uh, forgot the exact name of it. Basically, when somebody grabs your tongue, you circle in or you circle out. And that breaks the wrist. Because if I have this and you circle me, my wrist can only go so far. And it makes me break my wrist. It breaks my grip by doing a circle. So if you've got a gun, a circle is a very good technique to get somebody off your gun. You can circle around. If they're holding it, again, when you come high, it's going to break their wrist off. If you come low in the other way, it's going to break the thumb off. Now, ideally, from a tactical position, if you're, if you're good enough in this, you always want to roll to the thumb they teach you because the thumb's the weak part on the grip. I've got one thumb. I've got four fingers. The weak part is the thumb. So if I go toward the thumb, I can break their grip. So, again, a lot of things to remember when you're doing it, but if you have the gun, and I know i got to grab a gun, if it's locked like this, I'm going for this hammer area to block this. If the hammer is forward, I'm going behind that hammer so he can't pull the trigger. As long as I'm keeping this hammer forward, this trigger ain't firing. Okay, you see how much pressure I'm putting on here? I can pull this trigger with my finger right there, but when my finger's here, any finger, that trigger isn't pulling, and that's gonna stop this gun from firing. So before I go for a gun, I have to know that if it's a revolver and the hammer's back, I'm going between here, I gotta get something in between here. If the hammer is forward, I gotta get behind that hammer and stop that hammer from going backwards. So looking at a gun like this, I can tell, you know, as I'm standing here, how I'm grabbing it, whether I want that, I'm still always going for the hammer area, but I want that hammer forward if it's forward, and if it's back, I want it in between there. So even if he pulls the trigger, it's not coming off. That's gonna be my initial number one safety so the gun can't shoot me. Then I'll worry about getting the gun, fighting, kneeing, eyeing, gouging, nosing, whatever. Um, now, there's an old saying <laughs> they used to they used to say uh, 
pull the trigger to make sure that if you stick your finger in the barrel of a gun, it can't fire. And people will be like, you're stupid, man. If you stick your finger in a barrel, that gun can still fire. Now I'm going to lock this, pull the trigger. I'm going to lock it. I'm not going to pull the trigger. Stick my finger here. Trigger still pulled. However, this time, I'm going to put a little pressure, disengage that slide when I stick my finger in here, which is pretty tight. <laughs> now the gun doesn't fire. What I've done is you've taken an automatic out of battery. By taking a gun out of battery, you move this slide back just enough to disengage the battery. And almost all automatics will not fire unless they're in battery. It's, a, it's, an, it's just the way the gun is designed to work. So if you can remove this gun out of battery, now instead of doing this with a finger, which I don't recommend, I can do that with a grab. I just took it out of battery. So if I have to grab an automatic, I don't have a hammer to block. I'm grabbing it and disengaging that barrel. I want to grab it to where I know I can disengage and now the gun can't shoot. Pull the trigger and it can't shoot. Because I have disengaged the, bar uh, the slide, taking it out of battery just a little bit, and that prevents the gun from firing or operating properly. Now, I'm not going to do this with the gun pointed at me. When I do this, it's going to be a, a, a simultaneous action of numerous things to where I'm moving out of the way of the gun, I'm pushing the gun out of the way in case I miss, so if it does fire, I just get a bad airache. So it happens very quickly to where I'm moving and pushing, I'm moving, pushing, grabbing, taking out a battery, I'm moving, pushing, grabbing, getting my hand between the gun, I'm doing all these things at once, so if the gun goes off or my technique doesn't work, I know it's very hard. They've done studies with people like this because remember, reaction's always slower than action. If you put a gun at my face and I stand here like this and I tell you to shoot me before I grab it, it's very, very, very difficult to get a round off before I do that. Because I'm moving one out of the, gun, out of the way of the barrel, you don't know when it's gonna happen. So as I'm moving and I'm doing this, I'm blocking the gun from following me and I'm putting the gun over my barrel. And then you can do it on either side. As I'm moving, if you're pointing a gun, I'm moving out of the way and pushing away to me, away. Then I'm worried about disengaging for a second. Another thing about an automatic is after the first round goes off, bang, and I used to do this with my guys, I'd make them grab. <laughs> my guys at the range didn't think I was a <laughs> The, the, the greatest guy around, but they knew my training was good and they knew it was good, but they didn't like doing some of the shit I had them do. Uh, I would make everyone out there grab a gun. I'd let them put a glove on. In a crisis, they wouldn't have a glove, but it wouldn't matter. But I would make them grab a gun and grab the slide. Another person would pull the trigger and fire the gun. And it'd go, boom! And they'd be like, oh! People think, oh my God, the gun will blow up. It'll slide it. You don't do anything. All you do is you stop the action. Because normally when a semi-automatic fires, it goes back, it drops in another round and loads. Well, when you're holding it, it can't do that. So all that pressure just goes bang. No difference than if you fired it in a holster or, or if I put my hand in the back here and fired it, it would kick into my hand a little bit. But if you hold the gun here, and I had everybody done it, I've done it several times, because I had to do it first, because nobody would be like, oh, you crazy. All right, come here, I'll do it. And then you guys quit crying. So you grab a gun and then you have another guy fire it and you stop the action. Once that first bullet goes out, unless your suspect is tactically sound and he's had good training, he's not going to know when I get my gun back that I have to make sure that magazine is seated and I have to recock and reload around. He's not going to be thinking that way unless he's trained that way, and most crooks aren't. They're kind of fly by night, go bang, bang, bang. They don't go to the range and train, okay? They just train being cool. So they don't train for failure because of their mindset and they're out there robbing. So Another way to jam a gun up in a crisis if you're fighting for a gun is once I, once the gun's pointed at me and I get it out of the way like this, I grab and I hold. And I let him fire that one round while it's in a safety. I even intentionally will reach in there and fire that round off and hold this to create a jam. Because I know if I win on a gun, I'm going to wrap and tap and start putting rounds in. But if he gets the gun, he's going to have to stop and think. It's not second nature for him. He hasn't been trained that way, so he's not going to know to tap and rack. He's going to go, and they look at their gun. Most, most people that don't train look at their gun when it doesn't go off like, what the hell? Why did it do that? 
That's the time to act. That's when you're moving. That's when you're acting. And that's all it takes. If I'm fighting for a guy with a gun and I can grab this gun, let's say I've got my gun here and a guy pulls a gun on me and I'm grabbing and I either prevent, let's say it's automatic and I squeeze it and I hold it, can bang, one round goes off. I know there's not a round chamber. I'm going to give him his gun. Take it. Because by the time he can even do anything, I'm going to get rounds off and have my gun out. So there may be a situation where you want to get that one round off. I know the gun's not capable of firing until he taps and racks. I know that he's not faster at tapping and racking than I am at getting my gun out and getting rounds off. So take your gun and start tapping and racking because I think you're going to hit the ground before you're finished. So, um, you know, gun retention is one of those things a lot of people will require on a holster. Uh, I need a good secure holster so they don't grab it. I don't, I, I don't really want to be fighting somebody with a holster. I mean, if you've got a gun that won't come out, I mean, I've seen cops get thrown around with those security holsters. Guy has their gun, they're literally swinging them by the hip, and they're like, what the? <laughs> so, but the gun didn't come out. Now, you know, if a guy gets on there, can he get to your gun? Sure. He may get a lucky punch, a lucky kick in the nuts, a jaw, and, and, you, and you don't have a chance, and he gets your gun in that situation, this holster is not very good. If I go down and somebody walks up behind me and hits me with a bat, I'm kind of screwed because they're going to get my gun out pretty easy. But I get it out easy too. So uh, that's my spiel on gun retention. The, the main thing is you want the, the leverage that you can keep. And then a lot of other gun retention is distraction, circling, jamming forward, cutting, going down. You have a lot of power right here. Drive them to the ground. Drive them up in the air. Get below. A lot of people will say uh, another good retention, a guy grabs your gun is you drop low and you push up to their jaw. Because when you turn this hand forward, if they've got a grip like this, when you turn my hand forward, you break that wrist and when you drive forward, it's hard for me to hang on. So it's all about angles. Um, keep moving, hanging on to your gun. I mean, there's, there's not a whole lot of gun retention if a guy gets your gun. I mean, then you're, then you're into the situation where I'm not into gun retention, I'm into getting this gun, causing a malfunction, preventing it to fire, and getting into doing what I need to do to take my gun back. All right, so that's my spiel. Hopefully that uh, gives you a few ideas on gun retention. Somebody asked me if I would do something on gun retention. Again, uh, the best way to learn is to get out there with somebody trying to take your gun and defend your gun against somebody. The only problem with that when you're defending your gun, somebody might you know, get a bloody lip, get an elbow to the jaw, uh, get knocked out, so, you know, you got to have somewhat controlled environment to where you're not going all out, but you still get to practice your circling techniques, your driving, driving forward, driving up, driving down, using your knee, twisting, using the body to turn. It's all about leverage. Once you hang on that gun, you just want to keep fighting for it. Big thing about all survival situations is never give up. You never, ever give up. No matter what happens, you got to stay in that mindset, that warrior, I'm not giving up. Keep fighting. You know, in the military, they push, finish the mission, the mission, the mission, mission. Forget everything else, the mission, the mission, the mission. Okay? Well, the mission should always be survival, and you always got to remember survival, survival. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep pushing. So no matter how bad it looks, you know what? Guy's going to have a weakness. You just got to keep fighting until you identify that weakness, and then you exploit that and use it against him. And then you double tap him <laughs> and triple tap him and, and double, double tap him. <laughs> All right, we'll end that there.